Hello and welcome to the Blockade Runner podcast number 249. My name is John. Joining me this morning is Ryan. What's up, Ryan? Uh, good morning. The big uh, 249 today. Mm. I thought you were going to say the big face, you know, because uh, my camera's all close up on me <laughs> today. But yeah, the big 49. Big 49. We're, we're closing in on 250, um, which will be next week or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Next week-ish. Um, <laughs> next week-ish. Yeah, day one-ish. Ryan, um, we are today going to talk about the final episode of season three of The Mandalorian. So, you know, our podcast, like I think a lot of others, once um, there's a Disney Plus show on every week, we're just mainly talking about, you know, the new episode of the show. So mm -hmm. it will be interesting to go back to being a Star Wars podcast without a weekly episode of television um, coming up here in May. But for right now, we are uh, we're going to finish up our look at uh, Mandalorian season three and discuss chapter twenty four, the return. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we'll be um, too uh, hard up for content though, because uh, next Friday is Jedi Survivor, and then it's May fourth, and uh, Star Wars yeah. Visions Part Two. Yeah, there'll be yeah. there'll be things for sure. It's true. It's true, and did you know um, May is also a big anniversary for Return of the Jedi as oh, yeah. well? Yeah, back in theaters. Is that this? Is it in next May weekend? Okay. No, next weekend. Yeah, like oh. the the weekend of the twenty eighth or something like that. So, hmm. um, Ian in our Discord has been um, talking about that quite a bit. He was uh, actually suggested that we do some Return of the Jedi focused episodes in May, which I think is a good idea. But also, he's been um, chatting in there about the the showings for return of the jedi mm -hmm. um, next weekend and i am like waiting i think can, no, i guess maybe it's the same for him but i'm waiting for my local theaters to post the show times and the tickets for the next weekend and i keep checking um especially I keep checking this theater in elgin that i want to go to and nothing yet so i guess sometime this week I'll uh, I'll make plans to go see Return of the Jedi, but I'm def definitely uh, planning on doing that next weekend. Yeah, I'm not seeing any for um, Denver yet. Oh wait, yeah, there. Wait, there's a bunch, eh, but they're not theaters I really want to go to. So we'll see. I may <laughs> may end up just uh, just watching that 4K Blu-ray instead. You want to go to the Alamo Draft House to see I do, Return of the Jedi. And it's all yeah. AMC theaters that are oh. showing it right now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, don't want to spend too much time talking about movie theaters, but I have been going out of my way to not go to AMC theaters around here lately mm -hmm. because they've been really irritating me. Um, but um, And we've got a nice alternative nearby, so I've been doing that instead. Yesterday I went to see Evil Dead Rise, which was mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, definitely going to go to Return of the Jedi next weekend sometime, somewhere. So excited for that. Uh, and as you said, Jedi Survivor, Ryan, I just this morning um, purchased the digital version of Jedi Survivor. Have it all set up and ready to go for whenever it wants to um, download and preload and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a big one. Uh, Is it? 144 gigs. Oh, on, okay. Um, on PS5 at um, yeah where i'm grabbing it um yeah you're on xbox series s i'm on right? xbox series s yes so yours should be significantly smaller it should be smaller i don't know but do they do i don't think they do different versions for s and x do they they just have they like they do yeah because it's uh the um lower Yeah, I know that it can't output the same visuals and stuff, but I like, for instance, if you were to go buy the game on a disc, oh wait, mm -hmm. that doesn't actually work because there is no Xbox Series S disc drive. So, okay, interesting. Right. It's just like like, but, but if I go to the Xbox store, for instance, like to buy a game, we don't need to talk about this on our podcast. But um, when I do that, there's like the the Xbox One version, and there'll be the download for like the Series S X version. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I'm not. I'm. That's interesting. Okay, I'll look into that. I'm curious now. I only have about 300 gigabytes available on my Xbox, so 
should be enough, but um, not tons of room. Hey, let's talk about the Mandalorian. There's a lot to look forward uh, to in Star Wars going quick, forward. Though. Yeah. Um, Xbox Series X Jedi Survivor, 140 gigabytes. Xbox Series S, 44 gigabytes. 44? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, yeah. sweet. Cool. Yeah. All right, that's so. good. Mm -hmm. My data cap for my cable internet um, will be, you know, that's good for my data cap, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, let's yeah. let's return to our actual topic of conversation here, which is the Mandalorian chapter twenty four, the return, aka the season finale of the Mandalorian season three. Start with overall impressions. Been chatting with you all week, Ryan, about Star Wars, mm -hmm. and I think you were pretty into this one, right? Yeah. Um, for me, it was, uh, you know, a great way to wrap up a great season. Um, it felt like all the story threads kind of coalesced into um, this finale, and pre like pretty much everyone got their, like, hero moments, and, you know, it kind of wrapped up characters' arcs for this season um in a in a pretty satisfying way i think you know there wasn't a there wasn't like a like a big surprise um in there which i think you know some people were maybe a little disappointed by or were expecting um but and no um no big tease or like cliffhangers for the next season or anything i mean you, I guess that may be arguable, but not in the kind of traditional sense. Like you don't have, you know, the the post credits Thanos scene or something here, like setting up like the next big bad. Um, it's it it just kind of like wrapped up everyone's story and was like, hey, we have a new status quo now, and where it goes is anyone's guess. Yeah. Yeah, I think you uh, you had predicted last week that they would definitely do a post credit scene, right? I like did. that was like, yeah, yep. So yeah. no post credit scene. Yeah, I agree with not you. Mad. I think not mad. Not no. mad. No. Um, I think that it did. I, it didn't have a cliffhanger. I think it provided mm -hmm. a lot of indication of where the next season may be headed, but it didn't mm -hmm. like have a uh, a big. A cliffhanger like oh my god i i can't wait until the next season starts so i can find out what's going to happen with whatever element it really tied up most mm -hmm. of those um story threads like you said so that was cool yeah i enjoyed it uh, a lot i enjoyed the season a lot overall um i enjoyed the finale quite a bit i found it i don't think underwhelming is the right term but like and i didn't need any big surprises or you know big um appearances from new characters or anything like that mm -hmm. i think it was good but um yeah, I just I thought it was a a, a good um, concluding episode, but it didn't it didn't just I guess it just didn't hit that next level for me where I was like super hyped about it afterwards or anything like that. I, th I mean, I thought it was good, but um, yeah, yeah, it it there was like a a lot of restraint shown, mm. I think, because I think like you could have easily had like the you know the a thrawn stinger at the end or yeah. you know whatever like some like cryptic message about cloning or you know whatever kind of thing at the end but i don't know i've been thinking about this a lot and i think the like the post credits stuff and really kind of it was exciting at first with like the mcu um because like you know there were just those early years where it was like like who are we gonna see on screen next like this is just exciting it's like you know i grew up reading marvel comics and you know it was really fun to be like whoa this character is coming in live action soon and like um that sort of thing but after a while i feel like that sort of stuff kind of diluted like the impact of the film you just watched because it's like mm. wow these characters like really overcame like whatever and like they changed in these ways and like oh no 
no rest for the wicked because now there's like this thing and like you know it's uh it's like the 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 malibu stacy thing where it's like man i loved uh man i love these characters they're my favorite characters oh look over there there's a new character now they're my favorite like kind of thing <laughs> it's like who cares about like these characters i just spent two and a half hours watching a movie about because there's this next guy um and so yeah it started to just feel and it just felt like this endless cycle where the characters weren't actually growing or changing because they like weren't allowed to um because they were just on this like treadmill and um and so i i really really appreciated um specifically the ending of this this episode just like ending with like a sense of like relative peace and you know tranquility which is like so rare for like big budget genre fiction these days mm. yeah no i completely agree with that i i completely agree with the you know, the fact that they showed restraint and it's more tasteful and, and more to my taste specifically to not be like, you know, hey, here's the next, you know, new thing or whatever. Um, I do think, though, like, because I've been trying to figure out, well, why didn't this one hit, you know, for me quite as much as the other two season finales, you know, and um, not not to, you know, bring them up constantly on this episode, but our friend Ian um, had written in our Discord that he thought this was the strongest of the three, or at least for him, it was his favorite of the three finales and i and i think you might have said that you agreed ryan um yeah i did yeah yes yeah, yeah. so you do right 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 so um so i'm you know just um kind of wondering why it's not like working quite as well for me uh and it, it, that's not the right way to put it but that it just didn't hit me emotionally maybe or just didn't hit me like with the same level of satisfaction and then mm -hmm. i was thinking back to the previous two season finales you know and the first one's like did almost dies and there's like this you know ig 11 makes this or ig 12 like yeah ig12 oh, makes this big sacrifice ig11 yeah no ig11 is the one from the uh, 11 is the original oh. 12 is the gundam yes that's right that's right okay okay mm -hmm. my bad my bad my bad mm -hmm. um um wow this is wild because now i can't even remember it. like it's ig8 IG who's the original who ig is agile 88 88 yes yeah okay okay Spring right right right, right. agile watch out for him in shadows of the empire yeah, yeah, and that's the thing we say to each other all the time. IG-88 is agile, you know, and then I mm -hmm. couldn't remember his name there for a moment because <laughs> IG-12 and 11 have been on the brain so much lately. But anyways, there's there's this, these big emotional kind of moments and beats at the end of um, the season one finale and then the end of the season two finale. I mean, there's Christmas ornaments of moments from the season two finale, you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're mm -hmm. iconic, epic moments. Like, um, And I don't think that, like, this finale has to have something like that or whatever it's fine and and i think you know but i do think i don't know like the, like the scene at the end with grogu being adopted and all that you know that that's a very emotional thing and, and a great little moment but it just didn't i don't know it just didn't hit me i've watched it twice now it just didn't really just hit me that hard i guess and, and maybe mm -hmm. it's because the season was less about those two specifically and more about this big ensemble thing maybe that's part of it also but um yeah, I really liked it. I, I understand, I think, most of the, the choices they made about wrapping everything up um, this season and, and how they did it. I think it's a satisfying conclusion, but it just didn't wow me, I guess, overall. Yeah, I think, it, and that's probably, like, just a difference in the way you and I watch things, because I think, like, you you look for those emotional beats yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, you, you want to cry when you're watching Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, it's not that hard like, either. It happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't happen for me. Like, I'm, yeah. I guess, more, I don't know, pragmatic, whatever, um, when it comes to this stuff where, like, I, I want to see, like, character arcs and themes, like, you know, ending in, like, a satisfying way. And then, like, I watch that and I'm like, yeah, that's the good shit. That's what I like when yeah. when these these stories like wrap up like this. So, um, okay. yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, there was it was for me. It was like like a completely kind of like emotionless, um, but experience. But like that's not necessarily like a a bad thing. Like, um, and I'm 
yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I thought it was, there were emotional moments, but they just weren't as impactful to me um, personally. They didn't but. lean in to them like in a way that you know in, in like very cynical terms you could call like in a manipulative way yeah um, so yeah well we'll talk about some of those when we get to them i guess mm-hmm. why don't we uh try, kind of move into just going through the episode sort of scene by scene or you know section by section um mm-hmm. it of course picks up right right where the last episode Cold left open. off the yeah. Coldest of opens. Well, Axe Wolves is getting extremely cold as he's like <laughs> flying headfirst into <laughs> the upper atmosphere and then to that capital ship up there, right? So, yeah. um, we had been talking too earlier this week about the whole spy thing, you know, and uh, a lot of people we recorded last weekend. I wasn't even thinking about that spy stuff at all. We didn't talk about it at all in the episode. Like, who's the spy? Yeah. That didn't occur to me really at all. And then um, at work and just talking to friends and stuff, people would bring up that to me like who's the spy and i'm like what are you talking about you know and they're like well the episode was called the spies plural and i was like oh you're right it was called that yeah. i didn't even think about that um but it turns out like i don't think there was much to that um you know um at least in terms of breadcrumbing or or trying to to, to be some big hint at what's to come um mm-hmm. but i was thinking as axe wolves is cruising up to this capital ship here like okay is he what's he going to do when he gets up there and as soon as he gets up there, he's like, okay, all of you guys, you guys go down there, act as reinforcements. I'll stay up here with the capital ship, just me and the ship. You know what I mean? Everybody else go down there. And I'm like, ooh, he's the spy, right? Oh. Were you thinking that as it was happening nope. the first time? You weren't Not thinking that? No. Nope. Okay. But you didn't have people at work asking you all week, like, who's the spy though, right? Yeah, no. Okay. No, I didn't. So, okay. Yeah. So I guess that'll be a theme here because like there were a few moments where I was like, ooh, this is the, who the spy is going to be. But it was weird because it's like not even something I thought about. It was it was something it's that came to me later. I thought about either, and I don't I don't know. Like I actually don't have a good ep- explanation for why that episode was called the Spies. Um, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't know either. I mean, uh, so obviously, Elia Kane is the spy is you know a spy very mm-hmm. clearly in the beginning. Um, but then who else could be thought of as spies in that episode? I don't know. I mean, they had they had the Shadow Council meeting, and I guess anybody there could be thought of as a spy, potentially, like, who's going to go back to Thrawn and say, you know, this person's not totally... You know, all those people are always, you know, potentially going to second-guess one another or double-cross one another or something like that. So, But I, anything I could come up with for, like, why it's called the spies plural feels like a stretch, you know? Yeah. Like, if I really want to do some intellectual gymnastics or whatever i can i can you know come up with some argument for why so and so could be the the, another spy or whatever but it just yeah i don't know um Mm -hmm. i'm not sure what that was about but i don't think it was about the fact that somebody's a spy in this episode at least so far didn't um you know with this episode and this season being over it doesn't feel like it's going that way um and we talked about it you know over text message like i cannot see or I think it's unlikely that, you know, in April of 2023, they named an episode The Spies because then in like October of 2024 or February of 2025 or whenever the show comes back, mm-hmm. you know, it's going to be like, do you remember when we put that S on the end of the title a year and a half ago? Here's <laughs> why. You know what I mean? So Yeah, I, I mean, you say that, but they mm-hmm. did tease the Boba Fett thing like, really early in season one and then that didn't come around and, and people were like those were oh, Boba true. Fett's boots and then it didn't come around until um, you know beginning of season two right right that's true and, uh, yeah I don't know I, d- I didn't love that really <laughs> um, and I don't think I would like i mean we've talked ad nauseum about like you know are you know is the armor going to turn or whatever um you know is this 4d chess or whatever um and like that still just doesn't ring right to me like every episode that goes by that seems like more and more ridiculous um and i mean i i still hope they don't do that but also you know there is a, there is a good way to tell that story um 
but I think like the sudden surprise of you know one of these um, one of these Mandalorians you know turning heel like that I I don't think it will work. Yeah, I agree. I agree, um, and we can talk more about it when we get to the the discussion of like the kind of final threads or, or moments of the episode because mm-hmm. I think it, it will lend itself to um, that conversation. It'll come up there, but um, but yeah, I, I agree. I think it seems like everybody came together. You know that mm-hmm. that seems to be what this season ended up being about, and this episode yeah. ended up being about. So yeah, um, <laughs> the other thing that um, you know was obviously started in the previous episode that needed to be. Um, addressed or dealt with here is Din being, you know, that was kind of a cliffhanger, right? They had a cliffhanger from episode seven to mm-hmm. eight, not one from season three to season four, but yeah, Din had been captured and separated from everybody else. And so um, I, I thought it was, I mean, I don't know if you agree. I thought, I thought it was like slightly anticlimactic that like this episode opened up and it was just like, Oh, cool. They captured me. I guess it'll take me three seconds to free myself and like battle these guys, you know? I don't know yeah. that they should have done it any other way necessarily, but it just felt like he got captured. We waited a week and then it was like not really a big deal. They got captured because he just very easily freed himself, you know? Yeah. I mean, that was like a fairly, you know, I don't know if the intent of that scene was to like create like a really dramatic tension over the course of seven days of like will will din be okay um i don't like i don't even remember did we even like talk about it last week like him being captured so you're right that like nobody on earth would be like maybe he dies next week you know maybe he doesn't get out of it like of course he's gonna be fine but i still think you know just from an in-world in-story perspective like you're putting that character in a in dire straits like in a difficult situation and you know i almost i guess i just almost kind of feel like what's the point of doing that if it's it's going to be no big deal to escape you know what i mean so i'd agree with that yeah yeah it was like i mean there was honestly like it started i was like oh yeah he was captured i like because it was not even like top of mind and then like okay now he's free it's fine like, but see, I do lo- I do love the moment after though because the moment after is like he frees himself, but then they, th- is I think the Praetorians come in, and it's like okay, well he actually is gonna, or the Praetorians are the ones who have him. I don't know, but anyway, he frees him. It, no, 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 it's the uh, it's the the dark troopers that have him, right? Yeah, those are the ones he takes out. But then as soon as he does that, the Praetorians come in, and at that point he is going to lose, right? They're going to kill mm-hmm. him. And then you hear, and I thought this was really well directed uh, from Rick Famuyiwa and just like really well done, but you, you hear the voice of no, 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 you know, yep. and then you see IG-12 and Grogu and Grogu um, pulls those Praetorians away from Din to, you know, basically to save them, right? And I thought that was great. So I don't know. I almost feel like maybe it would have been better if they would have just had Din like those guys pull him into a room, they get ready to kill him, and then Grogu saves him or something, you know, rather than like showing Din. It it just it just felt like it was really ch- telling us like oh it wasn't really that d- that dire of a situation because he just mm-hmm. got right out of it. And it becomes a dire situation I guess after that. So maybe that maybe that undoes my point. But it just in the in the moment watching the episode, it, it just I really felt like wow that was no big deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think like the there was like a moment when when Grogu came in, I was like, oh, that's that's nice. Um, mm-hmm. But then I was like, wait, where where, where was, was he? he? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> um, and then I was like, whatever, it's Star Wars, and like Ex- just moved on. But like, I'm... exactly. I, I like the moment so much that I'll excuse the fact that like, wait, what? You know what I mean? Like, it, it doesn't matter to me because it was, was fun. Was he just like walking around those hallways in in his in his crane suit? Like, I mean, he should have been with everybody else, shouldn't he? Like, I don't know. I'd have to go back and watch not. the end of the previous like, one, but yeah, slipped yeah, yeah. through the cracks, <laughs> right? Because I I thought he was with everybody else and got separated behind that blast door, you know, and they all went the opposite way. But it's the power of um, you know, a child's love for their father. Like, he's gonna get their hell and high Maybe water just to busted save. Busted through that blast door. You know, you could have used the force. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Maybe there'll be a comic about it. Yeah. I uh, hope not. Um, but yeah, so uh, 
from there um you know din has a nice sort of moment with grogu because he's just like okay if we don't stop gideon now he's never going to stop coming after us or coming after you Mm -hmm. i'm going to need you to be brave he tells him and uh grogu you know nods or whimpers or whatever and and kind of indicates like yep so i thought that was a nice moment um it was Again, I, I don't want to spend the whole episode being like, I don't understand the logic here necessarily, but, you know, he's like on the phone with Bo-Katan and he's like, so Grogu and I have to just go do this by ourselves, okay? Like you guys are, you know, within a rocket blast of, you could all come here right now with me and help me do this, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I guess they had a lot of dark troopers to fight and maybe them being kind of having their separate battle with the dark troopers, you know, allows Din to kind of take on... Um, Gideon by himself but it sort of felt like why are you doing this just you and your baby are gonna go do this by yourself (laughs) it seems like you're you're really asking for trouble you know yeah I think it was I mean you could probably argue this for like every time Star Wars does um this sort of thing which um I think is one of the highlights of the episode for me is that like classic star wars like battle on three fronts yeah cross cutting between the three battles yeah yeah and i think like you know in probably any of those situations like if you go back to like you know the ones in you know rogue one or return of the jedi or you know wherever this has occurred you could probably be like wait why don't they just go over to here and do this thing instead um but what it does is it like creates just like a fun very like star warsy like action sequence um and you know it's just uh it's just entertaining to watch like cutting Mm. through like everyone fighting their own sort of fight and then like converging um in some way like at the end yeah yeah yeah. for sure for sure and uh, i don't know i guess it I think part of it, though, is like I don't often find myself kind of taken out of the experience by asking those kinds of questions like mm-hmm. in Star Wars. Like, I don't, you know, but there's a lot of variables, like the fact that I saw Return of the Jedi for the first time. Who knows how old I was and, you know, everything else. But um, I think usually. I don't know, it, it might just be a me thing, I, I suppose, but usually I feel like it's a little smoother where I'm not like asking myself those questions and then mm-hmm. I'm, I feel like I'm going along for the ride a little bit more. And then I think part of maybe why some of the emotional moments weren't hitting me quite as hard is because there were quite a few uh, little things here and there that kind of, you know, pulled at me a little bit where I was like, not totally, you know what I mean? And I don't want to say I wasn't invested, but I wasn't immersed all the time necessarily because there were little things like that. Like, you know, why, <laughs> I don't know you're talking to her and she's like out of she seems to be like she has her ability to they could come over and help you you know what i mean and you're like i yeah. gotta do it myself it's just a little it was a little weird um but i definitely agree with your point that like the what that sets up is you know uh works out really well and 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 you know creates this great like classic star wars finale action sequence which was very enjoyable for sure mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah um speaking of enjoyable action sequences did you enjoy r5 fighting mouse droids i thought that was pretty funny i like that yeah huge attack of the clones vibes Mm -hmm. attack of the clones r2 um stuff happening here there's like you know the the ridiculous like fight scenes there's like astromech flying um very very attack of the clones here um yeah yeah, i don't know i don't have an opinion either way (laughs) but the whole sequence din is really um counting on r5 to um to assist him and like putting a lot of trust in r5 which i think is you know just knowing how din kind of feels about droids i guess or whatever is Mm -hmm. good he does kind of ping pong back and forth it seems about you know in terms of how he feels about droids because like at the end of season one, he obviously over, overcame that, I guess. But then, like, season two, he doesn't like him again. And then, you know, he's, he's kind of – I feel like he ping-pongs. Like, sometimes it's mm-hmm. like he seems like he's got this big issue with droids, and sometimes it seems like he doesn't. But there were times mm-hmm. in this season where he certainly was m- – multiple times, right, where he was, like, kind of reluctant to trust droids or he didn't want to see IG-12 brought back. And, 
you know. So um, as I was watching, I, I feel like there was multiple moments where Din was asking R5 for assistance and not only asking him for assistance, but doing so kind of tenderly and like with like, there, I felt like there was a lot of trust yeah, and admiration uh, a lot of between use them. of the word buddy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot yeah, of buddy exactly. going on yeah. I know. that was very noticeable um, right so so in a season uh, of the show that was sort of i think frequently asking the question can people change can they get over their hang-ups you know mm -hmm. can they can they grow um i would say that's 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 an example of that for din um even though I feel like he's kind of already grown in that way multiple times yeah, before. Yeah, I was going to say, but... like, it's a little redundant at this point to, like, yeah. go back to that. But you're right. Like, he also, you know, he was, he was kind of a jerk um, to, to R5 at, at the beginning, so. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so, I think from there, it's uh, it cuts back to Axe Woves, who is up on that capital ship. And um, he's having some hero moments. He's really he's grabbing onto that mm -hmm. captain's chair as that ship is being overwhelmed by um, enemy ships. And uh, he has the idea that it, it, that it's going to be he's going to crash this ship down into the base, which mm -hmm. is pretty crazy, pretty wild. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say again, at first it felt like a double cross, like it, it, the, the whole plan with the ship and all that. I'm going to go to the ship on my own. Um, but then from there, it felt like, oh, is this a suicide mission? Is he going to go down with the mm -hmm. ship there? Because he was, like, just sitting in that pilot's chair, just, like, I mean, it was being overwhelmed, and he was, like, holding on tight, and I feel like he even closed his eyes to be like, this is it, you know? So I was like, oh, maybe he's just doing, like, a, a, a suicide mission type thing up there. Uh, a um, hobo maneuver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, but, it, but it's not that. Also, sometime on this show, maybe we can um, dig into the etymology of the phrase holdo maneuver um and um and how people use it and what it means because i feel like it's come to mean the thing she does in the last jedi but i don't think that's what it is because they talk about the hold oh battle of whatever holdo the holdo maneuver holdo you know mm -hmm. that's before she does the thing in the last jedi and it's not like she's doing oh, that yeah, all the time that's um no you're right because it's something she did before that elevated her her rank yes um but yes. I guess the thing she does in The Last Jedi is even cooler than the original Haldo maneuvers, so it just, like, replaces the term, maybe? Yeah, I mean, I was just <laughs> using it as a stand-in for, like, a, a Star Wars stand-in for, like, a suicide maneuver yeah. where the captain goes down with the ship. But, like, yeah, it's it's not exactly that, and because uh, she doesn't commit suicide multiple times. Okay. And, um, <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. And it's also yeah. not the, like, slicing through the ship thing yeah um that, like, but i think that's how people stuff. use it that's how people use it in conversation yeah. though which is fine yeah. i'm just being a you know just being a little a little so and so you know um you know uh words uh the the evolution of of words e etymology was the you know we got we got the origin and then how it's uh how it's used now perhaps mm. incorrectly um mm you know, compared to the origin, but people, you know, you kind of understand what people are talking about. True. And what's correct can be changed through usage. You know what I mean? Like if a, yeah. if a culture, if a people, if a society uses a, a word or a phrase a certain way, you know, repeatedly, consistently, then that it can become correct or it can become the new, you know what I mean? Whatever. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. Let's talk about yeah. the cool battle sequence between the Mandalorian, Din Djarin, and the dark troopers that are behind barrier shields, which R5 unlocks for him, you know, in a <laughs> okay. row, uh, uh, you know, subsequently. Yeah, so, okay, you are, like, starting to get to the point where, um, where I'm at in, like, my head when I watch Star Wars, and, like, I, I go through this every time where I'm, like, that that's ridiculous um and, like every time like i watch every single frame of star wars and uh -huh. like can somehow enjoy it despite of that in spite of that but like the the lowering the shields was so absurd <laughs> because we are supposed to believe that these dark troopers just hang out there 
all day just standing there waiting for these shields to go down. Like they just stand there like like Buckingham guards or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just and then it's like, oh, shields down, time to get yeah. to work. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, not only that, he's like having R five put the shields down for him, but mm -hmm. then like I swear there's a shot where a couple of those um, dark troopers are like, oh, we got to, let, let's go help the other dark troopers right now. And they're like hitting a button and the, the shield won't open or something. So yeah. again, maybe R5 is, is, is opening one door and like putting some kind of override lock on all the other doors, but they didn't say that, you know what I mean? They, and if they had, that would have probably made it less absurd. Because yeah, I think the fact that they just stand there all the time waiting for those mm -hmm. shields to go down is pretty crazy but then also the fact that like once they woke up they couldn't get out of there you know what i mean like it has to, the only way we can get out is if r5 somewhere else <laughs> opens up the doors like why like you yeah, know so. i think like maybe he like o did like an override on something first and like took control of them yeah was, that would make like, sense i guess the way i understood it in my head but it is like it is so absurd and like i know it was supposed to like build tension and you know it, it was kind of a throwback to the Darth Maul fight in um, episode one it was trying to like evoke those um, feelings I think in a way um, but like it, it is one of those things where it's like it's so ridiculous that you're like I'm not feeling tense about this or like immersed in it because it's like it's just it's so ridiculous but also but then like that kind of like flows into as it often does with star wars you're like this is so dumb and then then it's like but it looks really cool so um i think that's where it like kind of just like won me over like i don't feel like din is in any degree of peril right now and like I don't care if there's one of these things open or if, like, they all accidentally get opened. Like, whatever happens here, like, it doesn't matter because um, he's just going to he's just gonna beat these dudes up. But, like, but it was, like, pretty stylish and, um, and cool looking. So, you know, it, get, it, gets a, it gets a pass for that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's maybe there's something you said there. Uh, a minute ago where I think like this is maybe, you know, one of the ways where this episode is just a little not quite there for me or just like slightly off mm -hmm. for me because it's like, I think you said, oh, it's supposed to build tension or whatever, but it just like just the way and I could see where it could or would. And by the way, I think the scene was really cool. And like I'm down for just like a cool hallway sequence with like the Phantom Menace, you know, shields and dark troopers mm -hmm. and din fighting them and stuff like i'm not mad about the scene I, I think it's cool um but it's like this is one of those things where like it could have felt tense but it didn't and i think yeah. it's just maybe they could have adjusted the way it was put together a little bit and it probably could have felt tense you know what i mean just like mm -hmm. the same thing with the mandalorian in the beginning or din in the beginning of the episode you know getting out of like the dark troopers you know um you know freeing himself from the dark troopers like that could have felt like a big deal or it could have felt like it was really dangerous for him or something. But I just feel like the way it, they did it was like, it, it didn't really feel that way. And I'm sure they're probably with some adjustments, uh, adjustments, it could have felt a little more tense, you know? So that that's kind of a reoccurring thing for me with this episode is like, mm -hmm. there's nothing in it that I don't like, you know? And I think everything in it is pretty cool and fun. And, and I like the ideas, uh, you know, in the episode. And yeah. um, I, I like the episode overall, but like, for me, it's like an eight where I'm like maybe with, a, you know, some some editing or just, I don't know, reworking it a little bit. I feel like it could be a nine or a ten, you know, but it just doesn't quite get there for me because of some of this kind of stuff. Yeah, I think it's like thinking about like intent here. Um, I, I do feel like they were – the intent was to – you know hit certain story beats um to to wrap up this season and i think but you know it's star wars so there does need to be like a degree of action and so 
like the action wasn't the priority and maybe they were trying to just you know get through things quickly so they were trying to condense some of those action sequences to a to a point so that they could you know get to the the kind of meat of it of the episode yeah. um and i don't like think those things have to be mutually exclusive um and i think like probably a a little bit of tweaking could have um made a made better use of the time that they did spend on the action sequences um but i just i don't feel like that those sequences and like tension was the was the priority um with the the story here and i think that stuff just kind of uh kind of came first yeah no that's probably true that's probably true and you know something we didn't talk about um is that the episode's only like 40 minutes long it's um yeah. pretty short really um for i mean i guess it's not too too short for a mandalorian episode because they are generally you know more in that like some some of them are only like barely over 30 minutes long you know Mm-hmm. Um, others are 50 something, whatever, but, uh, you know, sometimes going into the finale, you kind of expect a bigger or a longer episode and it was like pretty brief. Yeah. I think it's, um, kind of going back to something from like a month or two ago, um, with people feeling like the, the last of us finale was, was rushed. Mm. Um, and it was, it's kind of like, I feel sort of like the same same way about that um as i do about this where like the you know it it wasn't really supposed to be like a tense shootout um you know at at the end of that episode like they were trying to get to you know the get the characters through this situation so that they could hit those story beats um at at the end and like kind of linger more on that stuff um and uh yeah i don't know but i think there is also like an expectation um with season finales um and you know maybe there is like an expectation it should be like a longer episode or you know it should feel like more like a movie or um you know kind of whatever there and i mean i think people just have different um expectations going into this stuff yeah yeah i i I actually think um the length was fine you know i I, I don't think it should have been any longer than it was um it didn't feel like anything was really rushed in in my opinion or anything like that and uh Mm -hmm. you know really i think episode seven and eight are pretty much one episode you know, they just cut yeah. them in the middle or cut it and, you know, split it into two, into two chapters. But you're picking up this story, you know, ru- you're, you're, you hit the ground running with this one, right? You, you basically just pick it up at the end of the last one and boom, 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 go, go, go. So, um, you know, I guess that saves time right there, right? Because you don't have anything to set up or there's no exposition needed at the beginning of the episode or anything like that. It's just like, you know, we're just picking up right where we left off. I wonder if it would have felt different if these episodes had been combined into one and you know it was like this hour and a half hour and 40 minute thing um and it was just like the series goes until episode seven and Mm -hmm. it and like if they were combined um if if maybe it would have felt different because i mean they were probably shot together um because oh, yeah. it's the same director yeah and, yeah um I, d- I i do wonder how how it would feel um and maybe you could kind of get that feeling watching them like back to back um but that's not the initial experience you had so it's kind of like impossible to to judge but i think this is kind of like one of the one of the issues um that can happen with um weekly episodes of 
of television and not the like approach of like putting everything you know dumping everything onto a streaming service at once is like expectations between episodes and predictions and stuff can um you know mess with people's um expectations going into um each episode so like if you were like if what you had taken away from episode seven was like there are spies in episode Mm -hmm. eight we are going to find out who the spies are like if that was your takeaway and then you go into episode eight like it's impossible not to be disappointed because that like wasn't there but yeah if it was just like episode seven and eight together called the return like i don't know could have could have worked a little better maybe yeah yeah yep sure sure um what did you did I, so from there there's like a, a a big action sequence and and as you alluded to earlier the cross cut you know, kind of throughout the, mm-hmm. cause we're, we're kind of to the climax of the episode here. The last, well, there's a, there's a, a kind of a denouement or, you know, whatever afterwards, but like the, mm-hmm. the big climactic component of the episode were, were there. Mm-hmm. And so they cross cut between these three big action sequences. Um, but I think the first part that we see um, before cutting to other ones is this jetpack battle with Mandalorians mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. dark troopers jetpacking all over the place. Um, some really great, little action moments and cool stuff like that. But um, just knowing kind of your taste, Ryan, and, and, mm-hmm. and how you feel about some of the stuff, I, bl- I believe you've mentioned that you were nervous about seeing action kind of like this, described mm-hmm. something very similar mm-hmm. to what we just watched. Um, how did you, how did, how did this find you? How did you, en- how did you enjoy this specific part of the episode? Mando troopers cruising <laughs> in jetpacks, fighting <laughs> dark troopers cruising in jetpacks. Mm-hmm. They fly now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, man, they showed those first establishing shots of like everyone flying up and, you know, converging into battle. And I was like, oh God. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. this yep. is, this is not going to be great. But then they do, they did something visually that I think was really smart, which is, because, like, it didn't look great. Um, I mean, uh, those those first few shots, uh, I was like, oh, this looks really goofy. Um, okay. And then they did something really smart, I think, is um, they blur the background when they get in on, like, the close, close-up shots. And I think, like, that just – and you just – you have like this blurred background you see like these like flashes of like action and you just hear um like these like whooshing sounds and stuff and i think that actually like made it work um whereas i think if you had like pulled out to like like a medium shot and just had you know everyone like fully in frame like doing it it would have looked so goofy um, but like really zooming in, blurring the background, um, I think like looked was like the best choice for that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think the, like, I don't know. I mean, I guess like I, this was certainly not an action sequence I needed. Um, and I think if it had been in isolation, I don't think i would have liked it at all um but i think you know the saving graces are like again like the techniques they use um for for the sequence but also the fact that it was part of something bigger like this was just one component of like a three like essentially a three-pronged battle um but and i guess like you know you have mandalorians and they have jetpacks and this was probably something that um you know john john favreau really i could see him like just really wanting to see like okay we got a bunch of mandalorians and they're flying yeah. around and like fighting and um like sure like whatever 
Yeah, I liked it a lot too. And um, it's not something that, you know, I necessarily would be, I don't know, super looking forward to, um, I guess you'd say. Uh, I think the points you made are exactly why it works, you know, um, it, 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 but I think just to, to kind of state it simply, they focus on individual components of it. You know, they focus mm -hmm. on, you know, one or two um, dark troopers taking on one or maybe two, you know, Mandalorian troopers instead of lots of wide zoomed out shots of, you know, tons and tons of, troopers battling each other i mean there's there's establishing kind of shots like at the beginning of the battle and you know once in a while they'll cut back to the larger view of the overall battle going on but mostly it's it's more kind of one-on-one -on -one sort of action and uh yeah i mean the shallow focus probably helps but um you know i i think this could have been and and I, I know many people love it i think you love it ryan but this could have been the geonosis battle you know mm -hmm. sequence with a million jedi in the middle a million um you know troopers or mm -hmm. whatever like just not um and a million droids and geonosians like it's just too much going on and i don't know that just is not really my favorite thing and i think the way this was handled it kept it personal it kept it focused on individual moments and um it just it just worked so you know in an episode where maybe there's a there's a few things where i'm like i'm not sure about the direction or i'm not sure about the the sort of editorial choices i think this is a big um a big victory in terms of, mm -hmm. of doing this really well and making it work yeah yeah, yeah. and i mean like th i think the geonosis battle is like a good example because you think of like what are what are the parts of that battle that like look ridiculous and not great and then like what are the parts that are like amazing like you mm -hmm. have like you know that like close up on like kit fisto and like <laughs> the the big smile and like yeah. there's like all these like these little things that like are like what's good about that scene and i think like yeah like this scene um really kind of like focused on um that like zoomed in approach which was the the right approach for this yeah for sure yeah, so then um, obviously it cuts to Moff Gideon and Din Jarin in that whole confrontation. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, before that, I didn't make a note in my notes, but before that, Din and Grogu walk through the room full of Gideon clones in the vats, you know? Yeah. I was expecting to see Snokes in vats, but it was Gideon clones in vats. Um, yeah. And that was pretty cool. It's kind of a, 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 an exciting reveal, a cool reveal. Um, but then Din, cold-hearted, just is like we just need to break all these vats open and just let these clones go you know what i mean mm -hmm. so like if omega had seen that i don't know what she would have thought like that was pretty cruel that was pretty cold-hearted but then again gideon clones that would be dangerous man you know although this season is about how people can change so maybe maybe those gideon clones should have been left alive and and allowed to uh to have an opportunity to change i don't know but then said oh hell no and just yeah he let them go you know um so then when gideon shows up he is pissed um as one would expect and mm -hmm. says something to the effect of my clones were going to be perfect the best parts of me but with the ability to wield the force you know mm -hmm. like he was making some super gideons in those tubes and um they were taken out so i don't know if you have any thoughts on on that at all or um, any reactions to Gideon's cloning himself, um, a lot of himself? Yeah, I mean, I think, like, the big takeaway here is kind of, like, what we, you know, what was either hinted at or explicitly stated um, in um, season one and mm. probably two that, um, you know, the reason Gideon wanted Grogu was to, like, get blood samples or tissue samples or whatever to um inject the force into <laughs> clones so i guess would it be like getting midi chlorians i think like, he needs to up the m count on these guys probably yeah. right yeah yeah so um but then having it like very explicitly um told here i think there's a lot of implications 
um, for that, like specifically with like the sequel trilogy. Um, and I mean, it's, you know, did we need <laughs> this explanation um, in, in, in Star Wars? Um, you know, did we need this for, you know, the, the sequel trilogy story? I mean, who knows? Um, you know, but I well, think there's implications for sure. Yeah. I mean, this specifically, I don't think is super tied to the sequel trilogy, you know? You don't think I mean, obviously it's all, it's all leading up to Palpatine's clones and all that, but, mm -hmm. and Snoke even, um, yeah. But Gideon himself, like the fact that Gideon wanted to clone himself and all that, I think that's more, you know, to me, that's, we're already dealing with all this cloning stuff. Like cloning is a big part of like this era. And, and you know, mm -hmm. I think more and more coming out of Celebration, um, Dave uh, Filoni and John Favreau have been talking about the Mandalorian as, and, and, and the other shows that they're working on um, as them kind of exploring this whole sort of time line or this section of the timeline of star wars and part of it is is really um setting up this conflict between the new republic and the mandalorians and ahsoka and whoever and this emerging you know new empire first order etc mm -hmm. and so like yes it is explaining it is um putting pieces into place for the sequel trilogy and because the like, cloning ends up being a big part of the sequel trilogy, you know, at least in how the first order, you know, what they were trying to do and how they came to be and all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it is, it is building that out, but yeah, I guess it would be either way. If you had the Gideon stuff, it would be, if you didn't have the Gideon stuff with the clones, it would be, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I think like having this moment, especially in, what I assume is the last episode in which we will see Moff Gideon. To me, it felt like closing his story more than like, oh, well, we got to put this, Gide we got to put these Gideon clones in because of the sequels on the horizon, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think it's not just that though, because it's also um, how this is going to tie in with um, the, the heir to the empire stuff too, because, and then, you know, like that's intrinsically linked to like dark empire and like there's a whole lot of cloning happening yeah. um in in those stories um yeah so. but last week we learned that brendel hux is more of the cloning guy than gideon is you know or like that he's i think i, th I think there's a i think there's a few fans of cloning um <laughs> in this um you know this this new um, this Empire sequel it's true. Um, That's that true. we have going on here. So, like, I think it's, you know, it it just is. Um, yeah. But, you know, I think it it's just, it's so funny to me that, like, the, um, you know, the the EU, the, the heir to the Empire, Dark Empire stuff, like, they, you know, came to the conclusion, like, what happens after Return of the Jedi cloning that's what happens and then you know we get disney coming in and being like okay all that's all that stuff's gone and people being like okay good because that cloning stuff was ridiculous um and you know some people and then others um were like man the, you know that was my star wars like i i love i love that that cloning and luke and you know everything and then like that it's like eventually just after enough time like this era of star wars also is like yeah it's cloning like that's i think that's just the natural conclusion you just have to you just have to land on and i'm sure like you know 20 30 years from now like the you know the original trilogy is going to get like remade and you know all all this is going to happen and then like you know 20 years after that like they're going to have like okay this is this is the follow up to our new original trilogy and somehow they're still like man it's got to be cloning huh like i don't know it's just uh just the natural conclusion of 
you know, the, the, the post-original trilogy era. And, you know, again, everything kind of just goes back to Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. That, uh, that movie is the key to all of this. Sorry, I was muted because um, I was clicking some, doing some mouse clicking there. But mm. um, yeah, I guess uh, I guess everything goes back to Attack of the Clones, as you say. Even though Attack of the Clones was like a decade after Heir to the Empire and the cloning stuff that came before. But yes, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, all right. So um, I, I also want to correct myself because I think I did mess up the way I was talking about the Gideon or not the Gideon, but the Praetorian Guard thing and Grogu saving Din, because Grogu does this kind of again. Um, in fact, I think earlier he doesn't distract and, and lead the Dark Troopers away. I think he just helps defeat the Dark Troopers or something. Um, I'm, I'm not remembering because I didn't write that down. But I know now, at this point, the Praetorians, I think this is when the Praetorians show up, and they oh, are messing right. up Din. They are yeah. really messing Din up. And that's when Grogu distracts the Praetorians into another room, and then they mess up IG-12, and then Grogu has to hop out of him and, like, jump along mm -hmm. the, that ceiling thing. Kind of, you know, not dissimilar to Attack of the Clones, as you say, you know, as you just brought up. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So that's when Grogu is really um, being heroic and, and saving um, Din from the Praetorian Guard specifically. Um, and then, you know, what, what did you think of Gideon as, like, a... Uh, a melee combatant you know what i mean as a hand-to-hand -hand fighter as a uh as a as a formidable um action hero himself what, what did you what did you think of that stuff i don't know like maybe maybe this is like ageist or <laughs> something but it the vibes were similar to like um palpatine in revenge of the sith um you know and him fighting and even like like dooku to a degree where it's like like really like you're the you're uh you're just this like total hardcore like melee fighter um i don't i don't quite buy it it doesn't doesn't feel like a major threat but honestly mm. like going back through star wars like it's pretty rare that you get um because it is like it's always like like young versus old um dooku palpatine darth vader yeah. darth vader in the the ot and like yeah you're like it, it kind of just it that's just you know the the way it is like you rarely get mm -hmm. like to like evenly matched um you know fighters on both sides i mean honestly like the closest we've really gotten in like the the mainline stories is like like ray and ben fighting on uh and on the the death star ruins like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think the sound design went a long way here though too um mm -hmm. the sound design like there you heard a lot of like gears and mechanical elements and stuff every time Gideon was moving so I feel like that that was implying or indicating that that suit he was wearing is pretty beefed up and has a lot of um, um, potential not to say that he's you know not formidable himself but I think like that yeah. that suit was doing a lot of heavy lifting for him as it does for all the Mandalorians too you know what I mean he has that man he has that Beskar armor in his suit like they yeah part of why i mean because they can just walk right into blaster bolts and stuff you know what i mean a lot of times and it's because they have that best car armor so um you know that does make it more believable uh i think um but so uh dan in 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 um gideon battle for a while there and uh grogu you know kind of distracts and, and tries to survive the onslaught of praetorian guards and then um bo katan flies in and she's like, I've got this. Go save your kid, you know, which mm -hmm. it's a it's a good moment. It's a nice, you know, kind of hero pop or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that was cool. Um, and then Din and Grogu kind of together take out those Praetorian guards, which was nice, too, because Din, Din does all the like actual fighting and stuff. But mm -hmm. there were multiple shots and 
edits where it was like it was clear that the Praetorium was just about to get their weapon and use it to defeat yeah. Din, but then Grogu uses the Force to pull the weapon away or push the Praetorium back or whatever. So it was definitely a um, a uh, team effort there. And as a result, um, Din tells Grogu at the end, you did good, kid. So I thought that was mm-hmm. nice, right? It's mm-hmm. a good father-son battle there together, yeah. team up. Yeah, yeah. And I think, like, something we we do see um, here is Grogu's stamina increase um, so much from, like, from, like, force use, because, like, I mean, we, you know, go back to um, seasons one and two, like, he, he does a, he does, like, a force push and then, like, falls asleep, like, yeah. kind of thing, and, like, here he is, like, he is using that force. Um, well, and yet it's just a sneak peek at what he's going to do later as far as using yeah. the force goes. And so. then, yeah, yeah, I guess we might as well talk about the, the Big Bang. Yeah. Well, we're almost there. We're almost to the Big Bang. Okay. Uh, Yeah, we are. Um, Because the next thing that happens is that Gideon grabs the Darksaber and crushes it. And I think some people are upset about this. I think some people are Mm kind of pissed about this. Mm -hmm. Where do you fall on that, Ryan? Are you okay with the creator's decision to, you know, allow Gideon to crush that Darksaber? Um, Where do you you land? Because I think some people, like I said, are kind of precious about the dark saber and i you know i'm not saying that to like pass a judgment necessarily but i think some people are just like you can't they shouldn't do that that's not cool that they broke the dark saber i'm okay with it i think mm-hmm. um the you know the like okay the dark saber is like cool looking it's like you know like this badass black metal like lightsaber like cool awesome um and but like to me like what it like how it matters in the story is like that it was something that someone needed to lead mandalore like Mm -hmm. to to lead the mandalorians to retake mandalore um bo katan has done that like she has she has taken like the the role of leader she's been accepted into that role she's you know led the mandalorians to take back mandalore like i don't think she like needs this like symbolic um sword anymore well i think i agree and i think even maybe more importantly than that part of what this season was about is some of those mandalorians realizing or you know kind of progressing or or whatever to a place where they're like maybe we can set some of the dogma aside or maybe we don't have to live and die Mm -hmm. by some of this dogma or whatever right so yeah Bo is their leader but also they have chosen not to be so dogmatic and so strict about all the rules all the time so I think to you know in that sense it's fine Um, fans love the Darksaber so hey it's not cool that you crushed it I guess but you know I love um, Luke Skywalker's and Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber, and it got crushed in The Last Jedi. And, you know, I think, Mm -hmm. number one, that was, like, a challenging thing. The movie's a challenging movie, and that's, like, a challenging, one of many challenging moments in it. And -hmm. I think it's cool, like, Mm -hmm. to challenge the audience like that, number one. And number two, guess what? It's Star Wars. You can fix the Darksaber. (laughs) You know what I mean? They fixed the hero lightsaber. You can fix it. You know what I mean? Whatever. So, um, plus they'll tell many, many hours of, television and movies and everything else about stuff with the dark saber from before this moment so you'll see it on screen again too so i think it's okay you know i think it in fact i think it was a bold choice and i think it was a good mm-hmm. a good choice yeah because it has yeah. some symbolic meaning and also it's it's like a shock and challenge to the audience so i think it's great on on all those levels yeah yeah i mean don't worry it will come back as like a double bladed dark saber <laughs> at some point with like the <laughs> general grievous 2.0 like yeah whatever like though someone is going to do something ridiculous with it whether it be on tv or like in comics or a book or something so um but i think like the purpose it serves in this story has essentially been exhausted Mm -hmm. so and i think like yeah i think um it is kind of 
I I think they could have maybe addressed it a little bit more than it like just being like broken. I mean, even just like a passing line of dialogue or something just to be like, you know, the characters acknowledging that no, we don't need this anymore, but I mean, as as an audience member, I'm like no, they don't need that anymore. Um yeah. for for this story and for Boku Chan's story. So Right. Yeah, but I I maybe they they could have cuz it is it it does kind of feel weird with like the absurd amount of like expository dialogue where like characters are like literally stating like the themes um oftentimes of of this show um it's weird that like this is a time they used to restraint and it was like you know it's up to the viewer like nothing yeah. has been up to the viewer like hmm. you've told us everything so far um so yeah it is an interesting choice and well speaking of speaking of of you know very straightforward lines um after that moment um Moff Gideon tells Bo-Katan Mandalorians are weak once they lose their trinkets and then yeah. there's a sweet ass shot of Bo-Katan saying Mandalorians are stronger together and then at that point like I guess maybe the Mandalorians fly in but if not like the ship crashes right from 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 Axe Wolves um, mm -hmm. and it, this is just another I mean, like there's so many times where if you stop and think of it of course like this stuff doesn't make any sense and star wars is star wars and all that and i'm, I'm totally mm -hmm. fine with that but this is definitely one of those like um gotta really set aside my my my, my uh, logic and and you know kind of really stretch that uh that disbelief or whatever or the the suspension of disbelief because that ship crashes into the base and it's like all right cool well there's gonna be a fireball for about 30 seconds and as long as we don't like get burned up by that it's everything's cool from there you know and i'm like that thing is massive it is massive it's like multiple city blocks like crashing down on this base like it, it just seemed like such a silly and it's fine that it's silly you know this show is often silly but it seemed like such a silly thing that it's like all right guys like um we should probably go because there's this giant ship that's about to crash into this base which would utterly destroy it and people are still like, yeah, I know, but I'm like exchanging punches with dark troopers right now. Or like, you know, they're all just standing there talking to each other. You can see the ship about to like crash into this thing and nobody's acting like we should probably get the hell out of here, you know? So it was pretty wild. And then as we had alluded to brought up earlier, like there's this giant fireball explosion. It kills uh, Gideon who has a jetpack on, but didn't seem to think he needed to fly out of there at all. So it kills Gideon. And then, um, Grogu, of course, creates the uh, Kanan Jarrus esque barrier in the Force that holds the flames back, and it's this uh, this I was going to say this great shot, but I don't know if it's that great of a shot. But it's this great shot of um, mom, dad, and baby, and baby is holding that fire back, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think in concept, it's great. Uh, anyways, but um, yeah, I've I've only watched the episode once, like when it mm -hmm. first aired, so I can't like I'm trying to remember this specifically, but. The part that I think was ridiculous to me is I don't remember if it's Din or Bo, but someone puts up their like giant like Mandalorian trash can lid, like yeah, that's Bo Katan, I think yeah, <laughs> that like is like the size of like a basketball and yeah. like holds that up in front of everyone <laughs> and it's like well don't worry I have a plan. Oh, okay. Well, Grogu. I mean, that's cool that you you did Look, that. I, I'm 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 guilty of nitpicking this episode to death. I have to say, you know, so I feel bad about that, but I keep doing it. But um, in that case, I'm going to stick up for Bo Katan and and the show because I just think like in that moment, like you would you would cover like that's instinctual. You know, you cover your yeah. face or whatever. You know, you you would do that. Um, but it wouldn't really work. But you would do it. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. But it's like what you were saying earlier, like like why wouldn't you like get out of there um yeah when like you would you would think like those characters would have the wherewithal to like you know they scoop up grogu and they like jetpack like out of there as that ship's like coming down and like and moff gideon would have like the disney villains death like done yeah. in by his own hubris being like ah i got this like 
um, kind of thing. But you know what it, it what yeah, because it, like like oh man like even like I can think of all these Star Wars climactic Star Wars scenes where stuff like this happens, but the heroes do like uh, you know the Millennium Lando flying the Millennium Falcon. It does emerge out of the second Death Star just as it's exploding, right? But he's trying to get out of there. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the Last Jedi, like yes, like you know they almost they almost die when snoke's ship is 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 you know all de- destroyed and whatever else but they're all rushing to get onto a shuttle to get off of the ship you know yeah. what i mean nobody's just standing around being like i don't know whatever you know so i mean mm-hmm. granted they're on the surface of a planet it's a little bit of a different experience but i just it just it's another i'm sorry to say but it's another example of like this should have felt like you were inches away from death and instead mm-hmm. it just felt like super baby just did the super baby thing and it was really not that big of a deal and you know what i mean like it just did not ever feel because on paper that is the most wild concept like a capital ship is going to crash into the base and we're on it you would look up into the sky and be like holy we have to get out of here Mm -hmm. and nobody in that in that scene seems to think that there's any reason to like leave you know what i mean it's Mm -hmm. it's pretty nuts i think it's pretty nuts yeah, I mean, I think it's, again, like, logic being kind of, like, pushed aside in for, like, character moments. Yeah. Um, I mean, for better or worse, um, because, like, you do get the scene of Grogu, you know, making the, making the anti-fire bubble um, for, for his fam and then like that being over and then him being like cool what's next Mm -hmm. like that that it does show like and we've already seen like him just like using the force using the force like he's getting like his power and stamina has just increased so much um you know i mean follow probably because of the training from luke like i mean that's i guess um or just i mean he hasn't like aged that much comparatively for you know his uh his race so um it's got to be that that luke training um yeah but i think yeah i think that was the that was the purpose of that and uh all logic was kind of like brushed aside for um for better or worse yeah, and it's fine. You know, like, it's a cool Star Wars moment. It's a really fun, like, kind of action sequence. And, you know, I don't want to, like, <laughs> we're, we're talking analytically and critically about this episode. And so, you know, these things are on my mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, it's not like I finished the episode and I was like, well, that sucked. Like, oh, God, Star Wars sucks when it's not believable. Like, I don't need it to be. It's fine. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But at, at the same time, you know, the other side of that coin is I feel like if you zoom out a little bit, And just look at this scene as a whole, like what it's trying to do and what it's trying to accomplish. I think, you know, there's a way you could accomplish the same things and have basically the same sequence of events, but have it feel to the audience more believable and more tense. Or you could have the same sequence with the same series of events and the same outcomes and have it feel like there was never really any danger or tension at all. And I'm not, I mean, I wouldn't go that far to say, oh my God, it felt like there was nothing. But I think. Mm I think it could have been made in a way that you felt that stuff more and they didn't really make it that way. You know what I mean? Um, and again, maybe that's a choice. Maybe they were just, mm-hmm. this This episode does have a very uplifting kind of conclusion and a very positive overall kind of thing. So maybe maybe this is intentional. Maybe they just wanted it to be more of like a, a really upbeat, good guys win kind of conclusion to the season. And it is that, you know what I mean? So that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, yeah, I just... Uh, there were there were a few moments where I was like, hmm, you know, I, th- I think this could have been done a little differently. And it doesn't mean you have to rewrite the scene or have like you, you could st- Grogu could still have the moment where he has the, you know, saves him from the fireball and everything. But if at least mm-hmm. they felt like before that, like they were, <laughs> man, this is bad. Or <laughs> like after that, they were like, yeah, or afterwards, yeah. like, OK, Grogu just saved us. Like, we better get the hell out of here, you know. But like, I just never really got that feeling from the scene ever. And it's kind of weird, you know yeah no i think um i think that's that is totally fair um for yeah because like i'm i mean throughout this whole episode like this has been like a reoccurring thing we've been talking about like 
there was I did not feel really any tension or peril um mm-hmm. throughout throughout this episode and I think like when Star Wars does like it's not that Star Wars isn't capable of that like it's not that these stories are so ridiculous that like you can't have that tension because like you know we see it um there's I mean there's been moments in episodes of the Mandalorian that have um have bit felt extremely tense um and then you know stuff like like Andor obviously um which is just like way way more grounded um where you're feeling that tension constantly um so i mean i do i do think it was just like it 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 was a choice um and you know that's that's what they went with um you know they they decided to focus on um some aspects and i think like overall i think that was you know it's not that you can't have one without the other um but like it's pretty apparent to me like what the what the focus was for like Mm -hmm. each of these kind of scenes and um you know it it almost just feels like they were like just kind of like you know they they needed to hit these like action beats and then but like it wasn't it wasn't where the heart was of yeah um, of this episode and the season i guess so yeah i don't know yeah yeah i mean you know i obviously it's okay to critique and and to uh, have problems mm-hmm. with stuff but like i i do i hope you know it's clear that like I still had a lot of fun with this episode. I still enjoyed it a lot. I still think it was good. I still liked it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's not, I'm not like, oh, it sucked and throw it out and it was garbage, whatever. I I thought it was great. But, uh, but it, you know, to me personally, I feel like some adjustments, maybe it could have get, it could have been next level great, you know, but, uh, Mm -hmm. but I don't know. It seems like it was next level great for a lot of people. So that's cool too. And I guess there's a lot of people that hated it. I don't know, (laughs) or hated the season or whatever. So that's true too. But I think like, I, like, I see like every single like thing that like didn't work for you like i i see that and like yeah um i mean most of that stuff didn't really work for me either (laughs) but like just looking at it like as a as a whole and i think like the story told i think as a whole like really worked for me so because there's going to be like another moment that we're about to get to that i thought was trash and uh but like it's still it still like didn't it still didn't ruin the episode for me and i still like felt like immensely satisfied um at the end okay. of this episode yeah all right well let's talk about the end then let's talk about the, the, the end there's a little coda or kind of like you know wrap up a little section here after all the climactic stuff which is you know i think it needed and that's good um but it definitely bounces around to a few different things um in just a few minutes here at the end and it opens with the armorer completing some kind of ceremony with paz uh what's his name ragnar you know i think Mm -hmm. which is paz paz's um uh, late poor one out late great paz vizela's son um and they're doing some kind of ceremony i personally found this confounding and confusing Mm -hmm. not a problem like i don't care but I'm like, we already, this guy just had his ceremony with the water and stuff. Is it because the monster popped up and they didn't get to finish it? Is it something to do with the fact that Paz died? But like, it just seemed like she was saying, all right, you're not a foundling anymore. You're like a, you're going to be whatever the next step is. And I'm like, I saw that on the beach, didn't I? Like, what, what is this? I, <laughs> yeah, this scene, I don't like. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, I this is what you know. thought was trash. This scene is what um, you thought was trash. Well, I think it's like the next part in particular. Um, but that this like whole thing, I was like, why, why are why is this happening? <laughs> like, why are you like spelling this stuff out in like this way? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't. I mean, I'm pretty ambivalent to um, the this part with um 
with Ragnar here, but I think, like, the whole purpose of that was to set up, like, the next part and, like, okay, now it's, um, now it's Grogu's turn. Because, like, they yeah. needed to, like, establish that apparently Mandalorians have this, um, you know, this, this confirmation proceedings, um, yeah. that happen and now, like, everything's elevated because they're, you know, in the the um the great lakes um of mandalore Mm -hmm. um so now it's like it's like super official now the purifying waters of lake minnetonka Uh uh-huh yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh yeah it could be um so yeah because then din says to the armor like okay well grogu it's time for grogu to do the same thing right add grogu to the song and uh the armor is like he can't speak yet if he can't speak he's too young and Din's like, well, what if a parent could speak for him? And 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 then the armor is like, oh, like Grogu, you're like you could be Grogu's dad. I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? He's been Grogu's yeah. dad forever. What is well, this? First, first, she's like, she's like, well, no, his his parents are too far away. <laughs> yeah, we don't know where his parents are. <laughs> and, no, and that's Din Jaren is his dad. What are you talking about? Yep. Um. So this. This part I thought sucked. <laughs> okay. See, I I didn't think it sucked, but I thought mm. it was sort of like an awkward setup to get there. Um, and at yeah. first, when I was first watching it, I was like, I'm almost mad because like, what are you talking about? Din's going to adopt Grogu. He adopted Grogu forever ago. Like, that's the whole thing. But then as I thought more about it, I was like, well, but you know, it it is a sweet moment. It's a nice thing for Din to say in front of everybody, like, I want to adopt him. And then when she's like, mm-hmm. he's Din Grogu. First off, I laughed and smiled. And I was like, this is fun. I like that. I like Din okay. Grogu. It makes no damn sense. It's really, I mean, I shouldn't say it makes no damn sense. It's, it's fine. I mean, it's just a different like arrangement or order of, of, of nouns, I guess, or whatever that, that I would have expected, mm-hmm. but it's funny. And it's, I think it sounds good. Din Grogu, you know what I mean? Din Jaren and Din Grogu, let's go. You know what I mean? I like that. So I think it's fun. Um, and, and I think it's sweet that Din, you know, in front of everybody is like, I will adopt him. I will adopt Grogu. But I also am like, bro, like you've been his dad for going on three seasons now. Like, I don't know why now it's like a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. To me, this, um, this scene was like poetry. It rhymes with one of my, <laughs> maybe, probably my least favorite scene in Solo, where, oh. where he's talking to the Imperial dude, and yeah. he's like, so who, what's your family name? He's like, I don't have one. Oh, Solo. Like, and you're like, why are you doing this? Why are you telling well, us this like who needed this to me it calls to mind the end of the rise of skywalker which isn't a bad thing to me mm-hmm. but like with the ray skywalker reveal because i like the ray skywalker reveal i love it but i also feel like as an audience we weren't watching the force awakens the last jedi and the, the rise of skywalker all of them feeling like it is very very obvious that ray <laughs> has been adopted by luke and leia and that they know it and she knows it. You know what I mean? Because if it had felt extremely obvious all along, and then at the end of the movie, she's like Ray Skywalker, and then, you know, the ghosts of Luke and Leia are like smiling at her or whatever, I'd be like, yeah, we know that. We knew that. You know what I mean? So I think like that's what this felt like to me. It felt like a confirmation of something that everybody already knew anyway. And is almost like, Again, I think after further assessment, I don't feel this way. But at least initially, I was like, it's almost a slap to the <laughs> slap in the face to Grogu because it's like, what do you mean you're just now finally admitting that you're my dad? Like you've straight up been my dad forever. You know what I mean? So that's how I felt about it. It just overall, like, is it a nice thing that Din wants to formally adopt him as a Mandalorian? All that stuff. Yeah, but like, <laughs> it's just so. It's just he has. Comp- yeah. uh, every conversation he's had with anybody ever for like two seasons at least he talks about Grogu like he's his son everybody calls him your kid you yep. know what I mean like it's c- constant so to be like and, and every he's like what if what if I yeah. were to be Grogu's dad what yeah. like yeah what if you have been forever dude you know <laughs> I don't know yeah that was <laughs> not one of 
the like it it wasn't a problem that needed to be solved no like no, no. It, it wasn't one of like the like themes of um you know this this season like how can you know how can din formally adopt grogu like yeah it it is like this issue that's created this problem created in five minutes in like this like wholly unnecessary scene and then like to just like the (laughs) putting like feeling the need to put a like words to it like fit like we we are like you were saying i'm just being redundant but like like you were saying like we've known din is grogu's dad like you know for two and a half seasons of this yeah. show and we just we know that we know han solo is a roguish like guy who does things his own way and yeah. <laughs> like we, we don't need to like put these like words on it and i think like i'm kind of like staying out of like the ray skywalker thing because i think there's like other things happening with that so that it's not like a one-to-one comparison um but like this this need to like put like to name something that like doesn't need to be named it's like you you can't even get like people to to call him grogu like in the world like are people now going to be like ah din baby yoda <laughs> like like well i mean i'm gonna call him din grogu and I'm, I'm looking forward to calling him din grogu i've been calling everybody din i like my uh, elliot my son uh din elliot i keep calling him that now you know because i think it's a fun wow. like you know <laughs> I, times in your household right now yeah yeah, yeah. i don't really have a name for my car or anything but if i did i would add a din in front of it you know as mm. i talk to it like i like it like uh we have a we have a um a vacuum cleaner like a little robot vacuum cleaner you know um i might start calling him din some i don't know but anyway long story short i i like all that part of it but like just mm. and i hate to be this like i do not want to be this guy who's like why did they just do this because i could have i could have done it but yeah. like i do not think in any way i could have done it better i don't think i can make the show these people are wildly talented I, i'm you know i'm not trying to act like yeah. they're not but mm-hmm. i'm like number one i think there's a way that this all the stuff that happened leading up to that moment in this episode could have been like Rogu proving himself as ready to be an apprentice. He saved Din twice. He helped. They worked together and fought mm-hmm. together. Why isn't that the conversation at the end of the episode? Armorer, Grogu fought valiantly beside me. I could not have survived without his help. He is a Mandalorian apprentice. He has earned it. You know what I mean? That would make so much logic. It would have felt right at the end of this episode. Or if they don't want to go this way, that way, if they want to go this way where the armor is like, well, his parents aren't here. Why doesn't Din look her in the face and just be like, I am Grogu's dad? It would have been declarative. It would have been acknowledging everybody knows it. I'm his dad. But instead, he's like, what if I adopt him? What if we go play these games? You know what I mean? And it just it did not have. I think I could. I got goosebumps right now. Man, that's pretty good. I wrote some dialogue and gave myself goosebumps <laughs> on a podcast right now. But like I gave I mean, uh-huh. like if he I think there's a way that that performance and 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 that that dialogue could have been really emotional and powerful if it would have been like no i am his dad what are you talking about but that's not at all the angle it took so just little things like that i just really feel like man there's some missed opportunities in this episode which is weird still really good but some definitely some missed opportunities yeah and you you know thinking back to when um din handed over the dark saber and he was like yeah, uh, Bo-Katan used this to save me. Like, she should just have it. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. and then it's like, it's so weird that he's like, all right, so what is the legal path to <laughs> this uh, kid yeah. being, um, hanging out with me? Like, yeah. Now, now to, to not be an asshole for a second and to kind of be a little more generous to the writers or whatever, I think... You know, you could you could argue that this is another moment where it's like we the armor is to a degree 
being progressive or setting aside like, okay, well, yeah, I guess, you know what? He's not supposed to be an apprentice yet, but we'll make it work. We will do that. We'll bend the mm-hmm. rules or whatever. So like, okay, you know, if, if that was the mentality of the writing of, of, you know, we want to continue to kind of build out this theme of, you know, kind of um, setting aside dogma or, or finding a, a way to work within that dogma that works for everybody instead of holding people back and restricting them, which is what I think, you know, the Mandalorians learned to do in this season in a, in a positive way. And that's something we had been talking about or I've been talking about in previous episodes yeah. is like, ultimately, what, are, what is it going to say about these people? What is it going to say about their culture? What is it going to say about their, their rule set? And I think it's a very optimistic, kind of positive, um, sort of uplifting uh, kind of final answer about all that, at least mm-hmm. as far as this yeah. season goes. You know, everybody kind of did their their best that they could do for each other. They came together. Um, nobody is forcing anybody else to kind of live a life they don't want to live because of some dogma or anything. I don't think that was true before, but I think mm-hmm. as season three progressed, that's where all of these Mandalorians have come to. So then in the next scene, when they're at that forge and everybody's shouting for Mandalore. It's an uplifting mm-hmm. thing because I don't think anybody's yeah. being held there against their will. I don't think anybody's, some people have their helmets on, some people have their helmets off. Like they've all come together and it's a positive thing. Yeah. It's just, and I think like, that's what I love about this finale. Like it, mm-hmm. it did the thing it set out to do. It had like a very clear mission statement in, you know, both terms of plot and theme. And it like, it did that. And it just, it sucks that, like, the waters just got a little bit muddied, like, for for this moment where there's, like, this doesn't quite make sense. Yeah. Like, like okay, yeah. we're, we're, you know, th- we're, th- we're throwing out, like, this dogma, that dogma, but not that one. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, but they, they, you know. She wasn't a hard ass about it though, because she did say, "Okay, fine, yeah, you, you know." It didn't take a lot of convincing, I guess. Uh, yeah, to get her but to... it's like it was so weird though, because she's like, "Absolutely not, <laughs> like, <laughs> no, it cannot be done. It is impossible." <laughs> and then, like thirty seconds later, she's like, "Okay, good point." Yeah. Like. Yeah. It, it's like, I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah there, there has again, like. I am not in this writer's room. I never would be. Like I am, but like there has to be like a more elegant way to communicate that because like the end message communicated was good, Mm -hmm. and like and what it like leads to is good. But like, why did you take? Why did you say it in like such a weird way? Like yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and then, okay, so then from there, the armor is like, all right, well, if he's your apprentice, you've got to take Rogu out on his own journey, just as your mentor did for you. He's got to go out and live his own life and have his own journey and all that, um, which as a concept, I think is cool, you know? Yeah. Um, and I also think it's it's very much like saying to the audience, all right, next season is going to be kind of more of a, probably less of less of a Mando ensemble season and more of a you know, I don't know, Din and Grogu or maybe other characters too, but I think this felt so final with the Mandalorians. And I, I saw a lot of people say like, this felt like a, you said this, Ryan, it felt like a, a, it could have been a series finale. Mm-hmm. And I think in some ways it could have been, but then in other ways it was like, like the armor saying this, like, okay, next season of this television show, you guys got to go out and have your own journey. You know, that didn't feel very final to me, but the Mandalorians all being there at the forge saying for Mandalore, as they've all become the best kind of version of themselves as a group and as individuals, that felt like we really did tell a complete story with these different Mm -hmm. factions of Mandalorians. And that story, I like, I don't personally really want a lot of, the Mandalorians in season four of the Mandalorian. Um, at least I don't think I do because it really does feel like they did a pretty complete beginning to end. These people were all separated. They've come back together. Mm -hmm. They've made their choices. They are a united force. I think they're a good thing to have in the toolbox for like next time there's this big battle and they need reinforcements or, you know, that kind of thing. But I don't think there's much left to explore in the next season as far as like, where do we go next with all of these characters and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure, th- I'm sure there's things I could do, but it just, it, it feels like they, they kind of close that chapter to me. 
Yeah, I I feel like it could go either way, um, because I feel like you could have like the approach that they've taken to like Navarro, where like you know eventually Din and Grogu go back to Mandalore, and it's like, hey, this is like a functioning society now. Like, look at you know how how things are here. Um, but like, I mean, I think you know maybe there is like some conflict in like how you know what is the future of mandalore like we know it is like a a place that like some imperials want Mm -hmm. um that it is like a hot spot in that way like in i i still think there's there could be or couldn't be more of bo katan's story to tell um and then i I don't know well i i look i mean i think these characters will show up again in the mandalorian season Mm -hmm. four i think they'll be involved but you know there was like i think there's some quote from rick mamayua from um star wars celebration where you know he said oh well now the show is it's not about din and din as the mandalorian anymore it's about all the mandalorians and all that stuff and i think you know we have talked about it on this show too like is it going to become a show that's more about like what is a mandalorian like what is that i think this season is about what is a mandalorian and who are the mandalorians and what do they need to do and you know all that stuff but and and they went from being supporting players to main eventers you know what i mean they were yeah like bo katan especially obviously but just the mandalorian culture was like a main character in this season and i Mm -hmm. think it should go back to being a supporting character um in the next season um or i think it will i think the armor's lines indicate that it will and then i also think just the finality of them it's so positive this conclusion it's so like we accomplished what we needed to accomplish yeah and as a result i think you know there's there's of course interesting you know, like their stories aren't over, their lives aren't over. And, and but even like the, the ship crashing into Mandal into the base on Mandalore, that almost to me like closes the book on the whole the Empire like the Empire like Gideon did take Mandalore. He destroyed it and then he built his base there and then they used a former Imperial ship to destroy that base and like yeah. they've taken it back. Yeah. So like if in the next season it's like, well now the Empire's showing up and they want to take Mandalore again. And to me it's like I really feel like they have have been pretty like they gave them so much time and so much space and so much um, focus in this season. Um, but I think by the end of it, it really feels like they've they've said, yeah, like a big chunk of this season was about them. But yeah. also now we've told that story. So I, I just it doesn't feel like they will be a big focus again in the next season, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think what we've learned from this season is, like, this show is unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Um, And, I mean, even in, like, season two, like, I don't think we could have predicted everything, um, you know, in in season two. Like, season two, like, oh, this is about Boba Fett and Luke Skywalker now? Like, what? Um, And so and ahsoka like i mean i don't i don't know my one prediction is still that um the din and grogu's adventures and missions that were implied are probably going to occur to some degree in um another season of mandalorian but i also i think there's going to be a video game because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this show is a video game and when they're like explicitly like hey you should go run some side quests like it just it feels like the most logical thing in the world to have you know the the din and grogu video game like yeah. and telling some of those stories that you know i mean like they could go back to like bounty of the week you know for the for the new republic type story but like that that feels kind of like a step back for you know the the storytelling here and like yeah you can still like tell you know interesting stories and like you know 
have those, um, you know, big parental themes and like, you know, Grogu growing up type stuff like that can still like, you know, that's still going to be powerful stuff. But like, I don't know, it does feel like a, a bit of a step back after like the escalation of, um, you know, these two, like season two and season three and how like the, the story has like gotten so much bigger. Um, I think what's the next what the next season is about is going to be informed by what we see in Ahsoka and Skeleton Crew. Yeah. Yeah. I think there I think those shows are going to introduce things that we are and aren't expecting that's like, oh, okay, so that's where the Din's story will kind of come in. Yeah. Um, but like I don't think it's going to be like um Carson Teva, like, you know, episode one of season four of Mandalorian is going to open up with Carson Teva being like, hey, I need you to go investigate this wreck on whatever planet. Like, and then they, like, take care of that in the first episode. And then it's like, hey, there's this thing in this cave. Like, can you go check that out for episode two? Like, and I don't think it will be that. Yeah. Uh, so, so okay. Yes. Um, so final things here. I agree. Although I also don't think they put this scene of Din going to talk to Carson Teva about taking on missions for the New Republic to not have him do that in the next season of The Mandalorian no, either. It's, like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen in a video game. Well, I think it's going to happen in the next season also. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I like your video game idea, and I want to play that video game, and you very well, they very well could do that. But I regardless, like if they do, it's still going to be the percentage of the audience that watches the show that would actually play that video game on whatever next generation video game console. Like it's a very, and and I think this season has lost some of the mainstream appeal to Mandalorian, the show, Mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Um, So I'm just going to throw that out there, but still, I think there's a lot, a lot, a lot of people that watch this show that would never think about picking up a Mandalorian video game. So, I mean, yeah, you could put a little tiny moment like this one with Carson Teva in there to see the video game and, 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 and tease that. And it, you know, it's not like the, the general audience is going to come back next season and be like, but he talked to Carson Teva. Why I need to see my X-Wing missions or whatever. But uh, I still, I feel, I, I don't know that they would, I think they're thinking about the larger audience and not just, you know, I don't think they are. I don't know. Yeah. Season three was not made for the, the larger audience who just wanted to see, Kmart, Boba Fett, and Baby Yoda fighting <laughs> around. Like, I don't know. You had IG twelve with the little Grogu steering him. Like, yes, yeah, no, I mean, yes, were, no. There that, were that, moments, that, but like yeah. they they could have leaned so much more into the 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 mainstream audience appeal, and they they did not. Like, they just like doubled down on like hardcore like. Yeah, I hope you watch the Clone Wars um, audience um, here, for better or worse. Yeah. My camera died, so I'm gone. <laughs> um, so we should wrap up the show here probably in a second mm-hmm. anyways. But we have to talk about the uh, the conclusion here. Um, uh, Din and Grogu at their little cabin that Grief Karga gives them. Yeah. I got to say, like, both times I watched the episode, I did find the last few minutes a little bit, like, kind of pulling me in a, in a multiple different directions so to speak mm-hmm. i guess i felt like it was a little disjointed it's nice but again like slightly disjointed to me because the armor is like you guys got to go off and have missions for grogu like grogu you need to take grogu on his own journey and then the very next thing that happens is din's like i don't know maybe i could get some bounty hunting jobs for the new republic which doesn't really feel like grogu going out on his journey and then right after he's like okay i'm gonna do some jobs for you it's mm-hmm. like ah, cool, we're hanging out on the ranch and Grogu's playing, I'm fishing and Grogu's playing with frogs, you know? And I'm like, well, wh- which of these things are we led to believe is going to be what's going to happen in the future? And I guess uh, the obvious answer is all of those things. Yeah. And that's fine. But it's still yeah. just kind of, I didn't feel like it was the smoothest kind of narrative there at the end with like, boom, 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 all these different plates spinning in the air. It just felt kind of weird. I think it, I don't know, I think it worked for me in that the way, like, I kind of read these scenes is, like, okay, um, yes, Grogu and 
Din Djarin are going to go on missions together. They're staying together. Like, they're going to still do things. Like, the D- Din Djarin is not retiring. Um, so I think, like, stamping that and then being like, okay, he's going to go back to, you know, the kind of work that he did, but he's going to do it for the New Republic. Because, you know, I think that's, that's important because he, this is like part of his like character journey is like he was doing work for like whoever, like it didn't matter, like a job was a job. And then now he's like, no, there's like, you know, there's bad people out here. There's, um, I see this like threat of the this like new empire um i want to you know i trust i trust the um the new new republic i trust karsten teva like this is who i want to do the work for and i think that's like a great like character moment um for din Djarin. and then and then ending like yes like we can have these jobs and like i can have my my work but like also like i've kept this kid like from going from mission to mission in the entire time he's been like in my custody now like we're just going to like hang out a little bit and i thought that was just like a really pleasant way to end like i'm i i think i've prefer this than if they're like all right well we're off to our next mission and then like you know they blast off into hyperspace kind of thing well i i think it's pleasant and in that regard i think i like i you know i like it in that regard because um this is like i said this the, the conclusion of the season i think is really positive and and ends mm-hmm. in a really positive way so i like it in that regard um but i still just feel like it it's i didn't have a problem with any of the individual pieces uh, mm-hmm. The problem to me is like it just felt sh- like a strange sequence of events where, you know, I just felt like what are we focused on or what am I supposed to be focused on or whatever. I think very easily just save the, the independent contractor for the New Republic scene until next season. Like that, that I, don't, I don't feel like I understand why that needs to be there. It's a hint at what's going to happen in the next season. So maybe they want people to like know what they're going to do next season. But, you know, if you have the scene with the Mandalorians, it's like you need to go on, be on your own journey. And then they stop on Navarro and he talks to Grief and he's like, man, we're going to go on our own journey, but I just need to chill for a little bit. And Grief Karga is like, well, I got a nice little ranch you can chill on. And then they do and they do. To me, that would make sense because it would be like, Yes, we're going to go on this mentor, this journey with Grogu. I mean, honestly, maybe that's all it is. Maybe the scene with, with Grief Karga, maybe the dialogue could have been a little more like, you know, I, we are going to go do this stuff, but I just need to take yeah. a break. You know what I mean? Maybe that would have made it work for, more for me. But still, like, I think I had, I definitely had whiplash when it was like, you got to take Grogu out on his own journey. He's got to discover himself. And then the next thing is like, can I get like work as for the New Republic? And I'm not saying that he shouldn't like do that or that doesn't make sense for Din as a character to want to do that. Mm-hmm. But like from one thing to the next feels like a 180. And I'm like, wh- why did we need that at the end of this episode? I don't understand, really. I I don't know. Like it it did. I didn't get the the whiplash there. Cause to me, it just sort of made sense. Like he's like, I'm going to kind of in in a sense settle down um to some degree um with my son but like i also you know and part of that is like having steady work Mm -hmm. and steady like employment and right but the armorer telling him to go off and let grogu have his journey doesn't sound like settling down with my son it sounds like grogu's got to go off and have a journey Right, but Grogu, like, can't do that for himself yet. Yeah. So, like, it still needs to be in, like, the care of Din Djarin. Well, I should say I have not found one living human being who feels like this finale was disjointed like I do. So I'm sure I am the issue because I haven't seen one person feel this way. Uh, And nobody I've talked to anyways has felt this way. 
So, I mean, I th- I've I've seen um, I I've seen mixed um reactions, and I think like um, I was reading some like critic um reviews, and like those are those are like a little bit mixed. Um, and some of the stuff are things that like you you brought up. Too. Oh, I've seen I've seen mixed reaction to the episode. What I'm saying is I haven't seen anybody specifically express like these last few moments and this sequence oh. of events is weird. Nobody else seems to think that this stuff is weird. So I think it's got to be yeah. like something weird with my brain where like it just I processed it differently than most people did because yeah. it seems to work for everybody else, which is good. I, I, I want it to work for everybody else. But for, for whatever reason, for me, it just it. And I don't hate it, you know. I watched it the yeah. second time, but I, I, and and this is probably not the best approach either. But I watched it the second time, being like, "Can this be smooth?" Like, you know, I, I went into it feeling like after the first viewing, this didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. But maybe if I watch it again, it'll work. And it just didn't really. I don't know. I mean, it's not offensive or anything. It just, it just felt like three separate things that didn't relate to each other very much. Kind of all dropped at the end. But you know, I hear what you're saying. I, I hear what you're saying about like you know, he needs, he needs work so that he can take care of Grogu. And, you know, Din is the one who's obviously going to be making the choices about where they're going to go and what they're going to do and all that. So I think that that does make, that does. Yeah. I can see that link between those things. Yeah. And I think like something can be like logical, like on paper. Cause like, to me, like these, you know, these three sequences, like they are like, a logical progression but like if it doesn't work for you it doesn't work for you yeah i mean and that's fine and i think it's also like okay to be um critical of yeah of that for that reason by under like you don't really need to have like a better reason than like this didn't work for me like honestly so yeah 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 nothing wrong with that all right, cool. Well, Ryan, um, I think we should wrap this episode up here. Yeah, so for real. Pretty exhaustive discussion of Chapter 24. Um, at least a couple things that we'll probably touch on next week um, and maybe get into some Jedi Survivor impressions and things like that, too. Um, our uh, uh, listener and friend, Rural Farm Boy, um, sent us a voicemail that I wanted to include in the show but I don't think we're going to have time for it here. And my camera died and the show's falling apart at the end here. So um, we will uh, talk we will... about just disjointed conclusion. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Who am I to critique? Right. So we will um, include that uh, message from rural farm boy next week. It's kind of about, um, you know, the Mandalorian season three and people's reactions to it and stuff like that. So I think, you know, it'll be a, it'll be a good thing to talk about next week as, you know, I don't think we're, we're done thinking about the Mandalorian or its impact on us is, uh, or season three, you know, even is, um, is, is done yet. So, um, we'll, we'll talk about that next week. And like I said, probably some Jedi survivor impressions and who knows what else. And then just a few days later, it'll be May 4th. So a lot of yeah. uh, fun stuff on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So until then, you can find all of our previous episodes, blog posts, et cetera, at blockade runner com. And you can message the show, um, as Rural Farm Boy did, by emailing us, blockaderunnerpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow the show on Twitter, at Blockade Run, or you can follow Ryan on Twitter at... Viamalay, V-A-Y-A-M-A-L-A-Y, or Standard Definition Gaming, DefStand 480. Ryan, do you think Standard Definition Gaming will have some Star Wars game footage um, in the first week of May on that account? Is that something you're planning on? Absolutely. Absolutely, and it's going to be tied in with the monthly theme um, for May, which is the Nintendo 64. Oh, my God. Okay, very good. So Mm -hmm. listeners should follow that account. Uh, What's the handle again? One more time. Uh, DefStan480, D-E-F-S-T-A-N-480. All right, right on. And um, I think I plug it um, inadvertently and um, intentionally multiple times throughout each episode, but our Discord is up and running, and a link to join that is in the show notes. So, um, you know, if anybody's interested or if you're a Discord user, uh, jump into our Discord by using the link in the show notes. So, um, with that said, until next time, thanks for listening, and we'll be back soon with a new another episode of the Black Hand Podcast.